Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Friday, Friday the 20th of October 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I made myself a little bit smaller and a little bit more over in the corner for a reason today because there's this chart here, and I guess I'm still too big. Uh, this chart right here... Uh, is all about this this is the one chart you need if you look right here uh, in 2008 or 2009 right in that area 2006 to, to 2009 you notice how the how this uh, this this red line right here this is the federal funds rate breaking point that red line, you notice how in 2008 we went over that line, exceeded it by quite a bit. Uh, we even exceeded the federal funds uh, exponential growth trend in 2008. Heck, even during the ta taper tantrum, or right here, the ta their ta Fed taper tantrum, we only went up to the Fed's federal funds breakpoint. Look here now, right on the end here. This, this look, we've exceeded all of that. In fact, we're at the highest point ever since back in the oil crisis of 18, 1982. And that was just a, a quick bounce up and a quick bounce down. This is steady acceleration, and we're still accelerating to the upside. It's going to break. The whole thing's going to break. I can't tell you where it's going to break because it hasn't broken yet. The point of fracture. But it, it's kind of like this. I mean, if, if you're going to drive over top of a watermelon with a cement truck. So you get the cement truck there and you're backing over the watermelon. You get up almost onto the watermelon. The watermelon's supporting... The weight, so far, is supporting the weight. But if you continue moving those wheels up over top of that watermelon, what's going to happen? Well, right now, we're at the point where the watermelon is accepting all the weight, but it hasn't split open yet. It's just, ah, it's close. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a loud pop sound in the system. Now, we already had a pop sound. I mean, going back a few months ago. The stress was already there we, when we seen Silicon Valley Bank go down. That was a pop. Fed reacted. $400 billion loan. That expires in March. The loan. What are we going to do then? They're going to have a $400 billion hole in their books. And what about these wars? Let's move on here and take a look at this. The U.S. diverts ammunition for Ukraine to Israel. It says the Pentagon plans to send Israel tens of thousands of 155 millimeter artillery shells that have been destined for Ukraine from the U.S. emergency stocks. Remember I did a show a couple days ago and I told you maybe that's the plan, is to get us stretched too thin with these wars. And if they get us, well, I mean, what good's a tank? He got a guy. He's up there, you know. He's got a he's got a tank driving it around the battlefield, firing off his artillery shells from, his, and he runs out of ammo. Now, what good is a tank? Well, he can still back it up into things. That's about all he can do with it at that point. And that's the way with all of the, all of the all of the uh, the war implements. You gotta have some things to put in them to to use, called ammunition, you run out of that stuff, and you, all that artillery ain't going to do any much good. <laughs> you know? And it shows you that they're already using up their emergency stocks. Maybe that's the plan. Get the United States on, on a footing, a war footing in, in, in Europe. Get the United States on a war footing in the Middle East. And then, when they start to, everybody starts to, and you know, in the end, ultimately, what these wars are going to come down to is the people's resolve. 
in the countries involved. Now, how strong is the resolve of the Russians? How strong is the resolve of the Chinese? And how strong is the resolve of America when things get bitter hard? If they were, if they were to start to run out, completely run out of ammunition and run out of men. Russia's had a call up of men, a going around scouring the country for men to, to embark to head to Ukraine. Now what if the United States has to scour the country for men to send over to the Middle East or over to the Pacific? What about the resolve of the people? Back in World War II, America had tremendous resolve. They did everything. They grew victory gardens. They, they put up with tremendous amount of, of, uh, of, uh, of rationing, unbelievable rationing. You're only allowed like one pound of sugar a month. You're only allowed like... And I see some people in my audience go, yay, we'll get thin. Yeah, you'll get thin because they cut, they cut the amount of meat you can have. They cut the amount of sugar you can have. They cut the amount of butter you can have. They cut almost everything. The only thing you can have in unlimited supply, I guess, back then, was I think potatoes was the only thing. And that's all you had to be, eat potatoes for dinner, potatoes for supper, potatoes for breakfast. Everything else was rationed. Do we have that kind of resolve today? What's the generation like in, in North America that, that's growing up under this soft, cushy period of 40 years of credit expansion? They have a name for them. They call them snowflakes, and they have other names for them. People have associated with the people who have bad hair days let's just put it that way every day is a bad hair day every day is like if they if they don't have all of the the, the little things if they if their tiktok doesn't work for 2 hours they'll go into a scream and hissy fit now now these sort of people are going to be expected to undergo suffering and hardship like the world's never seen before well they have seen it before back in world war 2 like i say I, th I don't think people in America realized how much the former generations suffered during World War II to try to get the war in Europe won. You know, and now over in Russia and, and places, are they going to, how are they going to fare? Got to take that into consideration in a global war scenario. Which could be, we could be ran the door. And, and, and I, I don't know if that was the plan or not to spread America thin, but that's what's happening. And if America gets real thin, spread real thin, and, and say a, a huge war breaks out in the Middle East, and then they, still the war in Europe gets worse on two big extensive fronts, China will be sitting there looking and saying, oh, look at this, they're running out of ammunition, they're, they're having a hard time. The, 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 there's, there's protests against the war occurring in their country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then China might say to themselves, hey, great time to go into Taiwan. I take these things into consideration. Uh... This is wartime. And, you know, the world, you know, it, the leaders decide when it's wartime. The people don't. The people would never have a war. Oh, they'd never, they'd never have a war without the leaders. You know? They would always be peaceful. They'd always have free trade between each other. But the leaders tell you when it's time. And they also tell you when it's time to stop. What kind of a crazy planet do we live on anyway? Honest to God, I'm telling you, and I've said this on a few shows now, if there's others 
watching us from out there. From someplace else. They must think we are totally ridiculous. They must just shake their head at us and just go, Oh, oh, these humans are so stupid. Look how they wage war on one another and kill one another during a certain time frame. And it's almost like... It's almost like it's it's a disease. It's almost like a virus that's spreading across the earth right now, and people are catching it. Should be a test out there to know if you if you've got it or not. Uh, maybe if if you were to sit and put electrodes on somebody, you know, uh, and hook them up to like some sort of a lie detecting machine or, or whatever, some sort of a machine that can sense everything that they're thinking and feeling and stuff. Hook them up to that, you know, and then say to them uh, things that would trigger them, like. Uh, uh, a person that's one of these real warmongers that wants the war and everything. Uh, because they they form a certain mental thing happens in their brain. It's different than an ordinary person when they're starting to get infected by this war bug. So if you say things to them like, everybody on earth is equal, everybody on earth is human, you know, we're all humans, Israelites are humans, the Palestinians are humans, we're all humans. That would trigger them. Because they've been infected by the war bug. And then all the sensors on the machine would go beep, 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 beep. Ah, he's got it. He's caught the war bug. Let's quarantine him for six months. <laughs> I'm just joking around, guys, you know. But, I mean, this is the size of it all, you know. I mean... It, When's it going to stop is, is when they get the, their fill of, of destruction. When they get satisfied by it. And it's like about every 50 or every 80 years or something, they get this, this thing where they, they, they catch it. It it's, it's just spreads just like COVID did. And once they get it, then they are like the the worst part of the infection. They bec they change and they become something called a soldier, and the worst part of the infection, you know. And when they're when they're infected that bad with this disease at that point, well, they only stand probably a fifty fifty chance of living through it because of, because of the infection, the amount of the infection they got in them. When they run off and, and screaming with their, their rifle into a field and they're bang, 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 then, then they've been infected to the point, their minds are infected and they're infected to the point where they might not survive because the other guys got it too. And they eliminate each other because they're infected with this disease of the brain. <laughs> I'm just joking around. Let's move on here. Uh, I'm only sort of joking because it's true. You know, but... If we can't have a little bit of humor, I mean, where are we then? Because then we're, that's another sign of infection. <laughs> if you got no humor left, if you can't even laugh, then that's another sign of the infection. Because we're supposed to be, if this world was being run like, right, the proper way, you'd hear laughter all the time. But you ever notice when everybody catches a war bug, you don't hear anybody laughing anymore. No humor anymore. It's gone. <laughs> anyway, why so serious? I mean, <laughs> uh, 54 cents to the upside, 23.56 for silver today. And they're doing their same old monkey trick. You know, they'll, they'll tempt us and get it up to around 24 bucks. You know, and then they'll smash it down to 21 again. <laughs> you know, how long can they keep this up until the system breaks? And it's going to break darn soon. We're in this little period right here. It's kind of like a little a little zone that they've created, the Fed's created, where, where the dollar's being supported until the system breaks. Don't know what's going to break, but it's going to break pretty soon here it, because the pressure is getting higher and higher every day as these bonds trudge upward slowly, slowly, slowly. 
And I mean, it, it's, it's like watching grass grow. It is a slow thing. But you know, if you put a time lapse on, you will see grass grows rather quickly. Just ask anybody who has a lawn to cut. Anyway, taking a look now at cryptocurrency. Oh, I forgot to do gold. I'm always forgetting to do gold, you know. But gold today is 1990. Oh, gold's doing good. It's almost up to 2,000 bucks again. It's up $16.60. Taking a look at cryptocurrency today. We're looking at Bitcoin. It's doing good too at 29,515. Almost ready to crack 30,000. Ethereum is at 16.05 and XRP is at 52.3 cents. So XRP took a big jump. 2.3 cent jump. For XRP, that's a lot. Taking a look at the stock market today. Uh, I had it clicked on the Dow here. Here we go. 154 points to the upside at 33,250. No, down. Sorry. Did I say upside? I meant down. 156 points down, 33,257. Taking a look at oil. Oil's at $90.16. If war really does break out, I think we're right on the edge of it right now. Then... Uh, we're going to see these oil prices go go up rather quickly and uh, the end result of that could well the first stop is probably going to be over 100 that's just the first stop and then heading toward 150 and it depends on how bad the war gets and how embroiled it gets in that area uh, a worst case scenario probably be like $300 oil maybe that's not even a worst case scenario can you imagine what that would do to us? Talk about a, a, a resolve breaker. When people can't feed themselves and they got no food, they don't they don't call for war in some other country. What they call for is 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 hell to pay. You ever heard the old saying the old thing about pitchforks and <laughs> <laughs> they turn into a mob at that point. You can look at bonds and rates. U.S. 10 years 4.92, and it's down 6.8 basis points. And the U.S. 30 year is at 5.07, and it's down 2.3 basis points. So we're having our down day. We get a small down day and two or three big up days. And then another small down day. So the day's a down day in these bonds. Taking a look at the U.S. dollar index at 106.65 today. And it's almost going sideways. It's going down very slowly today. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.